Hello everybody, my name is Rachel. Welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. This book is billed as a gender-flipped Alexander the Great space opera. I don't think you need to be a history buff to appreciate it though. I certainly do not remember very much about Alexander the Great or the real people and events around him, and I think I enjoyed it just fine. That being said, perhaps if you are a history buff, you'd appreciate some of the finer points of the historical references that Eliot is using. The plot of this book as I see it is that Sun, the princess and heir apparent to the Queen of Marshall of Chaonia, wants to make her mother proud and prove herself on the battlefield. She wants more responsibility now that she has come of age and has at least one relatively successful military campaign under her belt. Chaonia is an empire sandwiched between two bigger, more powerful empires, Fien and Yil, and it's on precarious ground with both of them. Then an internal plot tries to upset Sun as the queen's acknowledged only viable heir, and Sun uses an invasion to grab her own power and solidify her position within the empire. The story has four perspectives. The first one obviously is Sun, the presumptive heir to Chaonia. The second is Persephone Lee, who was yanked out of military academy and made an official companion to Sun. The third is Apama, a Fien Lancer pilot who is involved in mysterious action. Her sections are called Dispatches from the Enemy. And then the fourth is a Gatoi super soldier named Zizu, who fights for the fiend, perhaps unwillingly. There are many, many other characters as well, chief amongst them Sun's other companions, who include people like Hetty, her secret lover, James, the jaunty cap-wearing technical whiz, and Alika, a famous and handsome musician. All of these people are super talented, well-trained, and very dangerous with weapons. I completely loved this book. I knew that I would love it from the first page because I liked the way it was written. There's something to the style and the tone of this that I can't really describe, but I would say that it's written solidly. This is very, very competent, and I felt like, even though I've never read anything else by Kate Elliott, she's excellent at writing military fiction. This is military sci-fi, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to know if she's written a lot of really intense military fantasy in the past. And overall, this is just epic. This is some darn good epic space opera. It's also the kind of military sci-fi that I really enjoy, where you have this good balance between like the the space battles and, and those it, like intense sequences of strategy and such, but it, it's balanced with the the personal stories and understanding where those strategies came from and what people are thinking about. So it's just so much is going on in this book and it's actually handled very well. So the world building is probably one of the things that I enjoyed the most about this and there is a lot of world building. So much of that and the personal and political maneuverings in the story really set my imagination on fire. I kept coming back to certain elements and just thinking that was so cool. Like all of these warring houses in Chaonia, the secret dark history of Lee House, um, the system of companions and CCs who are like literally official friends of um, important people but also like bodyguards and also uh, hostages for the good behavior of their houses and stuff. All this like the checks and balances of a political system where people are ruthless and willing to to topple leaders to gain the power themselves. Um, then you have things like the Gatoi super soldiers, who I think we'll learn more about in future books in this series. Um, the Apsara Convergence Beacon technology, all of this um, post-collapse technology in the story was very interesting to me. Um, I mean, I love some good ancient alien tech that nobody really understands 
understands. I could just list so many things about this that I really enjoyed. Of course, I did enjoy the characters, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I also thought that it was very queer friendly. Same-sex marriages and relationships are absolutely normalized in this world. I mean, the Queen Marshall is married to multiple people, both men and women. Sun is the daughter of the Queen Marshall and one of her husbands, who is actually Gatoy and kind of um, distrusted because of that. Um, but she's also celebrating her wedding to a much younger woman throughout most of the story, and that's a big part of the plot. Um, and then, of course, you have Sun's relationship with Hetty. Hetty is one of her companions, which means that they are legally, contractually not allowed to be in a romantic sexual relationship, but they are. They're, they're in love. So it, their romance is not forbidden because they're both women. It's for forbidden because legally that should not be allowed between them because of their like legal status with each other. And, and so I came away from this book feeling like there were a lot of same-sex relationships in the foreground but also in the background and it just felt normal. Now, as much as I enjoy this book, it is not actually without its flaws. There are two things I want to talk about that kind of tripped me up, and I would like to mention them just because they're kind of interesting points of discussion. The first thing is the slow start of the book. Um, I expected to race through this book, given that I loved it from the very first page, and then the first 25% or so was a little bit of a slog. That surprised me. Part of this is just that it's trying to introduce Introduce so many concepts and strategies and politics. You have so much world building to absorb, and it's not spoon fed to you either. So you have to do some work to really understand what's going on. And the second thing for me, which really threw me off balance for some reason, is that I expected the book to be a really tight focus on just son as the titular character, as the Alexander the Great character. I think there was something in the way that the book was pitched, you know, in the marketing that made me expect it to be just one perspective. And it begins that way, and then it introduces three other points of view, and I was very confused for a little bit. I did eventually recalibrate, I came to actually enjoy all those other perspectives more than Sun's, um, but I would say that I, I think that for a lot of people, the first quarter of this book may just be a little bit difficult to get through because so much is happening in it. And I, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing because there's so much serious heavy lifting that needs to happen in the first part of this book, and it's done as well as it could be. But if it feels slow, keep going. It will get much faster later on. The other thing is that I just didn't love Sun. I didn't care about her that much. I cared about every other character far more than Sun, which is interesting because she's the main point of the book. Maybe she's not the sole main character. I think Persephone gets just as much page time as her, but she's the point of the book and I didn't really care about her. Maybe it's because I didn't I didn't really like the kind of person that she is, um, but everybody else was so much more interesting. Uh, Persephone obviously is more interesting. She's kind of the underdog with an attitude, and I loved her sections. Apama gives you this glimpse into the enemies side of things, and she has her own mysterious plot going on. And Zizu, he, he's the captured Gatoi super soldier, and he really serves to explain and humanize the Gatoi. I mean, grandma's knitted socks, and what he is and what he's doing really ties into um, Persephone's story, her family history, what is going on with the daughters of Lee House, but also with Sun's um, family and power and the fact that she's half Gatoy. So I got to the end of the book and realized I didn't care much about Sun as a person and about her personal goals, but I cared very deeply about all the other people who were pulled along in her wake. Those are all of my main thoughts on Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. There are so many things to discuss and dissect about this book, and at the end of the day, it was just 
thoroughly enjoyable and with so much intense and fascinating world building. I really can't wait for the next book. I believe this is the first in a trilogy and I will definitely be getting my hands on the next two books as soon as I am able to. Do let me know if you have also read Unconquerable Sun. What were your thoughts on this book? Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon and until then, bye.